Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest with us. It's Jeff Franz, and he's here today to talk about how to ignite the spark back into a relationship. So, Jeff, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Hey, thanks, Stacey. It is an honor. Um, yeah, I am a uh, leadership, leadership slash relationship coach and uh, been involved in uh, working with uh Individuals and couples in relationships for, wow, well, well over 20 years, going on 30 years or so. Um, I got a, over 20 years of uh, pastoral counseling experience, especially in relationships, premarital preparation, especially, uh, but also, of course, uh, marriage counseling uh, through some of the best of times, through some of the toughest times. And uh, found that the relationships are just just huge. Uh not only in our personal lives, but in our work lives, in the workplace. And so I managed to kind of fuse those together, marry them together, if you will. No yeah. pun intended. Every pun intended. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and and that's that's what I work with. But I do work uh, with uh, individuals. Currently, uh, my wife and I do a mentorship with premarital couples right now through our local parish and uh, just just love helping to see uh, couples to to build a brand new life together and find that excitement and and that adventure of this uh, brand new intimate relationship with each other that's amazing that sounds wonderful now you know we were talking right before the show we were talking about how you know when we get married and as time goes on sometimes the spark kind of drifts off and sometimes mm -hmm. it dwindles a little and I wanted to see what you had to say about how you think um, couples should, what, what they should do to ignite that flame, to get it going again, that relationship. Because it seems like, you know, when we get married and we, we are, our hormones are raring, we're in a different state of mind, you know, life is wonderful. And then as time goes on, you know, some people have children and families, responsibilities build up, stresses from work come in, and life seems to change for each individual. And so does the relationship. So as more things come into, the, into our lives are it affects our relationships and for from many for many from from people who have come to me you know as they've gotten older their the flame in the relationship kind of dies out a little bit and it's not the yes. same like when they first met and they don't know what to do they want to get that spark back they want to feel the way they mm -hmm. did when they first met each other but things don't feel the same it doesn't feel it feel the same you know that it just that the connection the spark even the intimacy is just everything seems to just change over time. So what do you what suggestions do you have to people as they get older and things to, seem to change? What's your take on this? Well, there are a lot of things. That's the good news. A lot of things uh, couples can do. Uh, my wife and I have been married for uh, going on 39 years this June. <laughs> and uh, looking forward to the Congrats. 40th anniversary and uh, renewal of vows. So, uh, and that's what you're talking about, that longevity. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, a, a, a huge part of it is, you know, going right back to the very beginning. Uh, my wife and I uh, did this and and we uh, actually, the things I'm going to talk about, about here, uh, you know, we've done. So um, it's, it's a matter of experience, but uh one is what are the expectations going into the relationship? Um, especially even when my kids were getting married, you know, I, I really advise them do premarital preparation, find a good counselor or therapist or a certified practitioner, uh, get into a focus program or prepare and enrich, but somebody that does a good job uh, with uh, taking an inventory of the current relationship Mm -hmm. And and down the road, how things are looking for you. Uh, we come into our relationships with these rose colored glasses. And don't get me wrong, man. I, I'm a, a big romantic myself. I love romance. Yeah. But life isn't a Hallmark movie. Right. You know, just, <laughs> you know, there's this thing called realistic distortion. That, right. Uh, you know, we come into it and like, oh, this is the only person for me. And uh, love will bear out all things. And. Yeah, it's great to have those thoughts, but uh, and then what happens when when you hit that speed bump in your relationship yeah. or or that uh, that danger zone, right? Uh, 
you have that uh we were just talking about the seven year itch where you know the, okay now we've been in married for a few years and you know you're starting to look at the grass on the other side of the fence and mm -hmm. and it kind of catches us off guard and especially nowadays that seven years statistically is now closer to three yeah you know, things are just moving so quickly and uh, suddenly uh where one of the partners is saying and this is the only person for me they're blindsided by somebody else saying hey you know i'm having these feelings which right. are really quite normal but how do i handle them and i'm in this committed marriage now this committed relationship so you know taking a look at that ahead of time being prepared knowing it's coming right and yeah, you know, what do you do as you as you go along? And you're right. You know, uh, careers change, children come along. It's it's like the mobile. You 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 tap one little corner of it, the whole thing changes and turns. And, yeah. You know, where does that go? Um. Obviously, one one of the things that I've advised with couples is you know just go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've been married ten years, twenty years, and you're feeling a little bit of a a dimming of that spark of that light what was it like when you were first dating right what did you do what kind of things did you do and you find that uh couples have gotten out of the dating scene mm -hmm. you know they, they they they've kind of gotten into this rut this sociological yes. rut you know so sometimes just going back to those things go back to where you had your honeymoon maybe for example right uh build in my wife and i built in a weekly date night after 39 years, we still do that. Friday night is our night out. We have dinner and go to a program, a concert, you know, what have you. Yes. Um, that, that's really big. Keep the communication open when you're in the car. You know, don't don't be putting on the CDs or the radio. You know, talk to each other. Right. You know, you know those those are some very simple things that you can do. And like I said, there, there are a number of things. Uh, so th that is the good news. You know, it I doesn't that, have to go stale. Right. I feel like in nowadays, there's so many, you know, people always on the phones. They're always, you know, in front of the computer. And sometimes they spend so much time, you know, focusing on other things that they don't focus on the most important yep. thing, which is their their partner. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. I, I kind of went into a conversation with one young lady who disagreed and I could understand, but you know, she had children from previous marriage and, uh, and she's like, my kids are everything. I'm like, well, really your new marriage is the thing you need to strengthen, not to dismiss the, the relationship with the children at all. Right. But those kids are looking for that security in that marriage. You know, they don't need to be going through that again. One of the things, uh, when I was, uh, working as a church pastor, as I said, for about 20 years, um, I had gotten very immersed in in my work and uh and i like telling this story because it's absolutely true uh one day i it was uh, like a late friday afternoon like four or five o'clock in the afternoon and i was immersed in my office and my wife comes walking in and she says put your work down we're leaving that's what <laughs> you were leaving and she said i booked a motel for the night we're going to the next town over. And mm -hmm. she says, I've already arranged for a babysitter. We had three kids at the time. <laughs> she's like, a babysitter. She's going to stay with them for the night. You and I are getting out of Dodge. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we had been married long enough to know better than to argue. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I did just what she said and it, and it was necessary. I mean, and sometimes that's what you got to do too. You just got to be watching each other's backs, be sensitive to one another. Right. You know, what they're going through. She saw there was, uh, I was showing signs of burnout. Uh, the marriage was strained. I mean, yes. we weren't in, in any real danger, but hey, the stress was there. Right. And there was a disconnect and uh, she picked up on it and she followed through. That's God wonderful. Yeah. You know, I find some, you know, a lot of times what I'll find too is that someone will be have these feelings. The other spouse is unaware and they they don't talk about it with the spouse. So the spouse or the partner isn't aware that these things are happening. And, you know, then the relationship seems to worsen. The other person seems to disconnect even more. And that's mm -hmm. when the big issues start to come along. What's your intake on that? Yeah, there, it's we, we call that in the business connection, you know, having having a real connection that that emotional empathy uh, and, and and mental empathy, um, watching for the signs, watching the body language, listening to the tone. You know, being uh, walking in awareness. Yeah. And and you touched on a big thing, too, which is the communication. 
and that's got to that's got to work on both ends. Uh, I've had more than one conversation. My own wife and I talk about this. We talk about with couples uh, when we're doing mentoring with them. We go through a whole segment on communication, active listening, assertiveness training, and uh, being able to you know, when you when you're feeling those things, finding a safe time and place where you're not going to be distracted. And, and talk about them and being a good active listener, letting and for me and the definition for the active listening for me is not just hearing what the other person is saying and understanding, but letting your partner know that you've heard and understood them. Right. And that means if you have to paraphrase back, summarize and, or even parrot in a, in a tense situation, do it, but let them know that you hear them. And when you're able to communicate like that, then you can bring in your, uh, if there's a, a need for any kind of conflict resolution going on there, problem solving, then you can work together. Right. I feel a lot of times, you know, you know, couples um, either when, especially new moms that have young children, they focus so much on the children that they kind of disconnect with their husbands. Their husbands are no longer on that pedestal. They're kind of like below. And then the husbands start to feel, or the partners start to feel neglected. And, you know, that also is an issue. Or like you said, the same issue that you had, you were immersed in your work and you were mm -hmm. so immersed that your wife, felt a little neglected because she wasn't having that quality time that she used to have with you. So mm -hmm. how do you find that balance? What's the best thing to do? Like I, the date night, I love because I even do that because I think, you know, yeah. especially when the kids were young, we would, we would just, we had mm -hmm. the grandparents nearby. So not everybody was lucky like that, but for us, we, we would have the grandparents as our babysitters and we would pick a yep. Saturday or a Friday night and we would have a special date night together. And mm -hmm. you need that quality time. What are some things that you suggest, you know, to, to help in, in the relationship? A balance, uh, you know, that's a good word for it. I've heard some people talk about integration. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody uh, uh, very popular was was talking about, um, I, I heard on another podcast, they were talking about, like, for example, uh, you go to uh, go to the beach house with your family, you know, you can take your laptop along. And man, I just kind of cringed at them. Like, yeah. ah, it's, sorry, I know myself, for example, too well, I would be on that laptop. I would, right. I, yeah, I'd be there, uh, you know, geographically, physically with the family, but mentally and emotionally, I'd be detached. You know, I don't recommend that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Sometimes setting up those boundaries, yeah. you know, like the date night. Okay, date night is our time, you know, uh, you know, we're not putting on the technology, we're shutting the phone off. Right. You know, uh, we're going to, to focus on each other. Um, you know, you, you can be thinking of things that you, you need to be talking about that you want to talk about. Asking questions. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Asking, uh, asking each other, questions, not just, you know, lecturing each other and uh, rambling on you know, with, yeah. from your thing. But, hey, you know, how are things with you? Uh, you know, how have you been feeling lately, uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally? Right. Uh, you know, how? Hey, if you're brave enough, ask, how's this relationship going with you? Is there anything that I could be doing right. to make you feel safer, more comfortable, happier, more joyful? I like that. I, I like, you know, just being blunt and asking, what can I do for you? Instead of what can you do for me? You know, mm -hmm. be a little unselfish and say, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. To improve yeah. the relationship. Sure. Yeah. Coaches, you know, look, look at that as, as giving value to, to coin a phrase from John Maxwell, how how can I give uh, value to you? I, I I'd love to see you know when when I've gone into work anywhere, uh, I, I, anywhere from I've done uh, direct support care for people. I, I've worked in warehouses. It, it didn't matter anywhere that I went. My I looked at my job as how do I make, for example, my manager, my supervisor, my boss, how do I make your life a little easier? Right. How do I make it a little bit better? What can I do for you? And how much more so? How much more, Stacey, to, to, to do that with your spouse, your, your significant other? Right. How do I make life a better better for you? I mean, and, and don't we enter into a relationship, you know, with that intention? We, we're looking for we something did. in our lives. 
Definitely. You know, that's, we were getting into the relationship to be with a partner and to spend our, you know, with the hopes of spending our, our entire life with that person to bond with that person and to grow old with that person. And, you know, yes. I see, you know, sometimes, you know, couples, you know, you know, they get so frustrated with the stresses of the world that they get into arguments mm -hmm. and, you know, and sometimes, you know, what do you suggest, you know, if, if, if couples have a tendency of always arguing, what's the best way to, you know, what do you do with your clients that you help these, you know, people learn to tone it down that we're not going to get anywhere mm -hmm. if we're yelling and screaming at each other, how can we get through this? How can we, you know, that frustration is getting in. They want their relationship better. You don't feel the same way. You don't act the same way as you used to. You don't love me anymore. You know, what's mm -hmm. going on? You know, it doesn't feel the same. You know, you're even when you hug me or we're in the bedroom, it doesn't feel the same, mm -hmm. you know, and instead of getting aggressive yeah. and frustrated with one another, how could they do it in a calm, productive way where they could actually get some progress and, and move to the next yeah. level and maybe start that, that healing process and start igniting that flame. That, that is a great question. And as a matter of fact, I take every couple through this exercise. It is, a, there is a conflict resolution exercise uh, called a step 10 step program and, or depending where you looked it up on Google, sometimes it's an eight step <laughs> program or whatever, but, it, but essentially it comes down to one of the first key things to do is to, find a time when you're not stressed out especially mm -hmm. if this is a uh, an ongoing situation an ongoing problem uh you have to agree to find a time when you're not being angry with each other you're not upset you're not stressed it, you basically you set an appointment you make an appointment with each other right preferably not in a public place but someplace private we can it would okay we're going to set aside 45 minutes an hour and we're going to talk through this and then there's a whole you know just a whole series of uh, of approaches to doing this but it basically comes down to uh stating clearly what is the issue you know, how, how do we both contribute to this? How do we both make it a problem? And brainstorming some possible options to resolve it or to at least make it better. Right. And uh, and then choose one of those to work on for a while. Then come back and say, like in a review, how, how is it going? How's it working? Right. Is this working? If it's working, let's celebrate. If it's not working, okay, let's try it. Let's try another one. Right. But you got you got to come out of that environment of of the stress. When do we usually argue, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's when we're already upset about something. He yes. did this, she did that, and why are you always doing that? I know it's been true with me, and I usually wind up regretting so much of what I said. But if you can uh, get that that time of calm, yeah. But I can say ahead of time too. If you're dealing, you know, you got to you're feeling stressed all the time. Uh, you 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 find yourself in that position where you're you're just upset, especially boy. That's a danger for me. A danger signal, red flag right there. If every little thing they're doing right now is getting on my nerves, you know. Yeah. Um, what do you do? Well, you, you just do exactly the opposite. I found, uh, especially as as our marriage has gone on and on, I am so grateful for my wife. I want to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. To quote right. the phrase, yeah. you know, uh, I I see what couples are going through. Uh, that you know, light going out. Uh, sometimes, you know, divorces. I it breaks my heart every time I read about this. Yeah, you know, a divorce has taken place or uh, cheating. You know, yeah. uh, cheating couples. It just, uh, it really hits me emotionally. And I am, ju I just, you know, give thanks to God, to the universe, to the cosmos. You know, for the mm -hmm. wife I have had. And uh, and continue to have and thankful to have her in, her, in my life. And if you can do that, you're, you're thankful for your significant other, your 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 boyfriend, your husband, girlfriend, wife, spouse. Uh, just just every day, you know, find something to be thankful for with them. You're, you'll find it if you're looking for it. You'll find it. You'll find many things. Yes, that's but take very the time true. to but take the time to look for them and and just verbally do it out loud to the universe. Thank them. Thank the universe for them. 
I actually made a journal um, and I published it. It was called the Positivity and Gratitude Journal because I feel like gratitude is so important. And sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, if you write it down too, if you take a moment or even just go outside, have a cup of coffee, have a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you look at, you know, you're just looking outside, maybe you see some trees or some flowers, something relaxing and you focus on that. And you just, you know, you think about your life, you think about the things that you you have gratitude for and the person in your life or the people in your life that you have gratitude for. And then think about how they make such an impact on your life. You know, mm -hmm. it changes the way you focus and it changes the way you feel inside, I think. How do you feel Absolutely. about that? A Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it all starts in the mindset. It is mm -hmm. all, it starts, uh, you know, in, in what we think about, how we think about it you know, the way we think, yeah. uh, that's, you know, uh, that's how do we respond? Our, you know, our thoughts create the, the feelings, feelings direct our, uh, our actions, right. you know, and, and it's in our actions. Our, our choices determine the outcomes. Right. And if I am thinking in terms of gratitude, guess what? Uh, that's eventually that gets into my subconscious. That's what then uh, creates the belief that, Hey, this is somebody special. Yeah. You know, I am so I, I think of that as I'm so thankful at the end of the day, this is the woman I come home to or I'm home with. Right. You know, this is the one I wake up to. And uh, uh, and <laughs> and that's a very exclusive relationship. And I'm thankful for it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and once that is in my subconscious, it's down in there. That's what uh, really directs my own internal response. And hey, that, what is it what is it, between 85 and 95 percent of of our uh, beliefs about ourselves and our actions, our outcomes come from that unconscious belief right. system. You no. Know? Oh, so, yeah. yeah, when I get that down in there, then that's how I'm going to speak to her, treat her. Um and the outcome is going to be a beautiful relationship. Yeah, it doesn't mean you're not going to have your own uh, struggles now and then and challenges. Welcome to life. <laughs> you know, but uh, but I think they minimize more and more. And uh, and hopefully, too, you have a uh, have the tools in your toolbox to deal with them. Which, by the way, another, one other piece of advice I would give, give is uh, don't hesitate to look for help. Look, you know seek out a relationship coach you know right. seek out a, a marriage counselor or a relationship counselor and you know don't don't be afraid to do that right i think you know don't, I, don't go for the friends you know friends give you bad advice <laughs> i think it's good to have an outside perspective myself yeah. also yeah yeah and i you know i I think also the media kind of distorts people's illusions and, and, and creates illusions actually. And people, you know, they have a wrong idea what marriage really is. You know, you see the, this romance on TV and you see all these things on TV and you think, or in the movies and you think that, you know, or the, a lot of the younger kids, especially, and, and people even, you know, as time goes on, people think, wow, you know, I don't have that, you know, and, and you know, something must be wrong with my, with my relationship. And mm -hmm. it's not, you know, any relationship is not going to be honky dory all the time. Things are going to change. Don't you feel right. like that? How do you feel? Yeah, I think you nailed it. Yeah. Uh, and we are so caught up in, in this day and age with uh, the entertainment media. Yeah. In, in one fashion or another. I, I, my my own ideas were distorted by that, mm -hmm. you know, growing up. I, I grew up in the 60s, 70s, into the 80s. I was married in 84. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and there were all those kind of distortions of the way it should be. And the first uh, speed bump that came along, we were caught off guard by it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we had to wherewithal to, to work it all out and everything, but uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think even more so, don't you think? In this this day and age, I mean, we it's almost like an escapism, you know. Yeah, I, you know, I the, do. the entertainment industry is for those who can't handle reality, so to yeah. speak. No, I, I agree. And, you know, a, a lot of times too, you'll see, you'll see one thing on TV or you'll see one thing on the camera, but then you'll see these people off the camera and their life isn't, is, is, is wonderful as the, they play the character on TV. It's, it's an illusion. Mm -hmm. It's make believe, but then yeah. a lot of people believe in it and they think, wow, this is how it's supposed to be. But 
you know, these characters are, are getting paid to, you know, make life look so, you know, amazing and wonderful and, you know, and because yeah. that's what people want to see. People want to see the the good stuff. People want to see that make believe stuff. But mm -hmm. in reality, life has a lot of speed bumps. It, you know, it's a rocky road for. And if someone says, "Oh, I don't, I've never had a rocky road," they're lying because everybody right. at some point has either one or many rocky roads along their path. I think. Yeah. 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 If a couple comes and says, you know, we've never, and in fact, I had this one time early in my uh, premarital counseling career, uh, you know, a couple saying, uh, well, I said, you know, what do you, what do you usually fight about? You know, I'm trying to dig in deep into yeah. you know, what's going on with them. And and, and this was a, a routine, you know, session with them. It wasn't, they were seeking out counseling for anything. And they're like, oh, we don't argue. I said, well, then that might be a bit of a you know strong term you know what What do you what do you disagree on we don't disagree you know wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> and finally it's like what is wrong with you yeah <laughs> you know because it does it does get scary thinking well you know is that the case which is if it is the case that's wonderful otherwise you're saying you know what are you covering up what's hidden here what do we need to unravel for you right but, uh, you know, it's a, one thing if you look at the the Hallmark movies or uh, you know the sitcoms or whatever it is that, that we're looking at the the romance, yeah, rom coms and things. You know, it, I, I like the word you used. You know, the the ideal. If if we're looking at that, okay, this is an ideal to shoot for. That's one thing. You right. Know, if I you know if I can use the tools in my toolbox to yeah. to smooth things out to make it look more like that, great. Yeah, but to to walk in with those expectations again that. Well, this is how it is. And if I fall short, there's something wrong with me or, or worse, there's something wrong with my significant other. Right. Oh, there's something wrong with you. We don't get along like that couple in, on TV or on the movie screen. Right. It must be your fault. Right. I think, I think that's one of the, one of the main factors. You see so many people believe what they see and they have to realize that life isn't, you know, it isn't um, all roses that there are th a lot of thorns that, you know, you, you know, and you're going to get pricked eventually, you know, here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and people have to understand the, literally the uh, visual entertainment, television, um, movies, they are designed. It's just how it works psychologically to draw you in into their world. Unlike you open a book and you read and now it's your imagination. That's at work. Yeah. You're watching that on that screen. And you're drawn into that world. And right. suddenly that world becomes your reality. That's why, you know, some folks have a real difficult time separating them out. Yeah. You know? But, um, yeah, but if you if you go into it with that awareness and it's just entertainment and, you know, you're probably fine. Uh, but again, strike the balance, you know, man, draw the boundaries. Right. Pay attention to the reality of the person you love and who loves you that's there with you. So if you had to give some tips to people, if they feel like, you know, their marriage isn't the same like it used to be, what what tips would you give somebody to to help them ignite the flame again in their relationship? What are the main factors you think people should focus on? What are the important tips or important steps that you want people to acknowledge? Wow. You know, I think we covered those pretty well, actually. You know, some really good stuff. I thank you for yeah. that question. Um you know, one, uh, certainly if it, if it has become problematic, if it's really creating a stumbling block in your relationship, number one, you know, again, don't be afraid, don't be embarrassed to to seek out help. And like I said, you know, somebody that knows what they're doing. Yeah, you know, I've right. got good friends, I love friends, but you've got to be careful those say, yeah, I just throw the bum out, <laughs> you, know, he's, 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 you know, or your dumper, she's not worth it. You know, don't do that, man, you know. <laughs> look for a relationship coach. Uh, I've had people do that call and say, Hey, uh, it's with the same thing, you know, Hey, we've been married five years and you know, things are starting to feel a little down, you know, yeah. what can we do? Uh, so look for a coach, look for a therapist. If, if you need to go that route again, you know, go back to if, if you've been uh, together for three years, five years, 10 years, whatever. And again, go back to that, the time you first met. Mm-hmm. And that time you started dating and what, and not only how did you feel, but what were the things you were doing at the time? Right. And, and nothing, nothing wrong with doing that again. My wife's first date and I were, was a pretty good, typical Western Pennsylvania date. Yeah. Yeah. We went out for dinner and we saw a movie. Show mm -hmm. you how old we were. We saw E.T. in the theater. That's how <laughs> 
<laughs> that one just came out. And um, <laughs> my wife could tell you the exact date. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and that's one of the things we love to do together. Right. So, um, so yeah, go go back to those things that, that you had done before. That, that, get away. Uh, yeah. We love making long weekend trips out of town, out of state. Uh, spend time together. Make sure you have a good balance of spending time apart and together. Sometimes it's the other way around. Right. Sometimes you're 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 especially coming out of COVID, right? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? You've been locked up with this person for how long? Now? <laughs> <laughs> we weren't designed to do that. You're right. Um, strike a good balance, right? You know, of of time for yourself and and time together. But again, I I think above all, come into it with that attitude of gratitude. Yeah. Every, you know, every day and every night, think of the things you're thankful for, for that special person. I think that's great. That's great advice. Now, where could people find you if they, if they want to reach out now, if they don't live in Pennsylvania and they mm -hmm. still want your help, can they get that help from you? Can they get some Absolutely. counseling from you and coaching from you? Absolutely. Yeah, I do probably do most of my work on online. Uh, you can find me on on LinkedIn, Facebook, Facebook, especially I, I seem to hang out there more. Uh, but LinkedIn as well. Mm -hmm. I think you and I met on LinkedIn. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram. I'm actually on Instagram. Just look up my name. And the name of my uh, coaching company and training is uh, New Horizons Life and Leadership Development. Mm -hmm. New Horizons Life and Leadership Development. It's a long name, but it gets things done <laughs> <laughs> and it does just what it says. It's it's life and leadership development. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really, it's, this is kind of exciting time. I am just uh, really uh, have just done a relaunch, um, all kinds of brand new things happening and new programs coming up. Uh, so the one thing I don't have is, you know, in places, a new website, I got an old website, but it's, it nah, doesn't help much <laughs> don't even go there anymore, but uh, definitely LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram are the best places, or they can email me new Jeff at new horizons, LLD. That's for life and leadership development. I just shortened it down because that's a long name. New horizons, <laughs> LLD.com Jeff at new horizons, LLD.com. Okay. That's wonderful. You know, Jeff, it's been a, such a pleasure having you on this show. And thank you so much for giving all this great advice. I think it's mm -hmm. going to help a lot of people. And I just want to thank you. Thank you for your input. Thank, thank you for you. advice. And thank you for what you're doing. You know, you're doing a great, you know, job helping others, you know, especially people who have devoted so much time with one another. If you can, if you could bring that spark back and save that relationship, you know, for, for sure, you know, take yes. the time and effort to do it. I, yes. I think that's wonderful. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you for the honor and the privilege. It was a great time. Thank yes, you. Yes, same here. You have a great day. Take care. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.